Hi, everyone. We are glad to have you with us today. And uh, guys, please share um, with us if you can hear and see us well. You can submit your responses to the um, chat section of this webinar panel. And uh, we have a great discussion today uh, on uh, getting your user acquisition strategy ready for the high season. Uh, we will give our participants just another couple of minutes to connect and uh, we'll uh, start the, sh the session soon. And you know, as I see people are connecting uh, right now, our virtual room is getting uh, busier. Uh, I think it's time to start the show. Uh, once again, I hope you can um, see and hear us well. Please let us know in the uh, chat section of uh, the webinar. And once again, hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for your responses. We are happy to uh, have you all here at uh, Splitmetrics Apps Growth Panel. As you know, uh, Splitmetrics is a global company offering an ecosystem of products and services for mobile first companies uh, worldwide to simplify their rate of business success. We are an Apple Search Ads partner with a dedicated team of 180 experts uh, who live and breathe mobile app growth. Uh, we are obsessed with uh, making our customers successful and probably that's uh, why top um, world app and uh, game publishers choose to grow with uh, split metrics. And uh, you know, the holiday season is just not, uh, around the corner. It drives uh, more app downloads than any other time of uh, the year. Uh, today, we've gathered very seasoned uh, user acquisition practitioners from Feature, from Ad Quantum, from Split Metrics uh, to discuss key insights uh, into how app marketeers can capture the moment during this crucial time of uh, the business year. And uh, my name is Olga Noha. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Split Metrics. I'll be the host of uh, our today's meetings. Please welcome our experts and panelists. I'm very happy to have you uh, here, Natalie. Natalie Rosenblatt, our the Senior Performance market, uh, Marketing Consultant at Feature. For nearly five years, Natalie has been uh, in the mobile uh, industry at Top Growth Agency. She worked with uh, many different app verticals developing and executing cross-team performance uh, marketing strategies, focusing on increased user acquisition and uh, LTV. Natalie, it's great to have you with us today. Thanks, Olga. Thanks for having me and excited to be part of the panel with uh, the rest of the panelists. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have Anton Kuzmin, a user acquisition group head at uh, Quantum. Uh, Anton has five years of experience in digital and mobile advertising, including three years as a team leader. And uh, he worked with more than 40 customers uh, all over the world across various industries, gaming, financial, e-commerce, fitness, you name it. Anton, we are happy you're with us today. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm glad to be here and glad to uh, tell something. Tell you something interesting about the UA and about high season. Thank you. We are looking forward to it. And uh, we have Matt Tatarin, uh, account executive at uh, Split Metrics. Matt helps app publishers of all sizes automate, optimize, and scale Apple search ads campaigns profitable with the Split Metrics ecosystem of products and services for mobile marketing. In the past year, Matt helped uh, progress twenty apps. A digit worth of budget with uh, Split Metrics Acquire. Welcome, Matt. Thank you for the brilliant opening, Olga. Happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have a brilliant panel. And uh, just before we start, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. Uh, the purpose of today's panel is uh, to provide this practical tips and advice on amplifying user acquisition during uh, 2022 holiday season. We have some questions prepared, uh, but we uh, also open it up uh, to the audience for questions. So please feel free to submit your uh, comments and questions in the chat section of uh, the webinar panel. Either our panelists on the call or uh, our team in the chat will share the responses. And uh, if we won't be able to cover um, uh, all of your questions during this session, we have only one hour planned, right? We will follow up with uh, the responses additionally. And uh, 
<laughs> you're safe. This session is uh, being recorded. We will um, send the recording to all the registrants uh, after today's panel. So um, you won't miss uh, any the tip or uh, any advice our panels have for you today. And uh, with that, I would like to open our today's discussion, guys. We are at the end of the summer and uh, it feels like it's way too early to talk about Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas or uh, any other winter holidays, right? But time flies so fast and uh, the mobile marketers uh, want to make sure that they are very well prepared for the holiday season. So the big question is how long before the high season uh, it is better to start crafting a marketing plan. We even have a poll um, <laughs> so that our audience uh, could respond to uh, this question, not only our experts, right? So um, <laughs> let us know, does your company have um, the uh, plan for uh, the holiday season of uh, 2022? And uh, while we are getting responses from the audience, Natalie, in your experience, how long does it take to prepare a seasonal campaign for this hassle-free launch that we all want? Yeah, so ideally two months in advance, so that way you, your team has time to run creative brainstorm session, they have time to plan um, the proper like UA channel strategy plan, and then this gives your design team enough um, like kind of leeway basically to start production, have multiple feedback rounds on design and give your campaign managers time to set up campaign shells and have everything ready to go live before beforehand basically. Um, like right now at Future, we are actually already planning for the rest of the year. So, um, I mean, ideally you give yourself two months but you can already start as soon as now to start planning through and have scope for the rest of the year. So it's a very good timing for us to talk about it now then. Uh, Anton, and uh, what about your experience and recommendations on this? Um, at this point, I agree with Natalie. Uh, two months should be enough time to prepare everything you need um, uh, for user acquisition uh, in some high season or just some exact uh, holidays. Um, most uh, likely you will spend uh, all this time uh, on creative production because uh, you won't be ready for price increasing for CPM increasing in, in auction auction because it's normal and it's, it's nothing to afraid here uh, but uh, mm, obviously if you are planning to mm, introduce some seasonal promotional uh, promotions in the product or um, such a special content package in game or some uh, you know, um, special offer in food delivery or special uh, boots for some for, for some holiday like halloween or saint patrick's day valentine's etc uh you should uh worth starting to think about it even earlier uh but what about marketing it's necessary uh, two months is necessary to prepare enough uh, creative assets and uh to launch it it's okay <laughs> that's uh, good uh, I i'm happy that you um we have the same experience with natalie matt what what about you what are your observations in uh, regards to working with app marketeers and uh, ua managers yeah i mean uh, great answers from natalie anton uh, it's hard to add anything new but uh, I, I would say from the experience working with uh, ua managers uh, it, it seems like they are already prepared and understand the high level annual seasonality when they just start the job and knowing the trends uh, when they have the special dates where they have high season the low season speaking about like uh, those keyword iterations or the creative assets normally we can see that they have the hard draft months in advance so uh, typically i would answer like uh, they prepared for the current quarter events in the previous quarter already and then uh, yeah we, we see also sometimes the marketers prepare way in advance so for example those with the high season in winter will uh, reach out to us checking uh, the platform in terms of their tool research for the upcoming season like six months in advance which is uh, might be smart when they spend the time wisely during the off season but then uh, we also have the examples of last minute initiatives for example uh, we have a customer who would request uh, some special tips and then we share this uh, custom tailored automation tactics uh, for the special uh, hot season and then it also helps with the implementation uh, and uh, yeah, just give this stress-free holiday to the UA managers. 
Mm -hmm. That's uh, th that's smart, and uh, thank you for sharing uh, th this experience. And uh, you know, guys, let's look at uh, what our audience uh, has responded to uh, us. What are their plans? And uh, uh, the responses are very interesting. So um, a little bit more than one third of our audience uh, has their seasonal uh, marketing campaign in uh, in place already. And uh, the same amount of the audience uh, do not have that um, process in place yet. Uh, so almost 50-50 um, mixed uh, results. Um, we are here now for this uh, very specific person to help those um, those um, uh, marketeers who do not have uh, their seasonal marketing plan in place be prepared for the high season still. So uh, hope hope um, you can bring home uh, some valuable insights from uh, this, this conversation, guys. And uh, now let's move to uh, the more interesting part, right? Uh, strategies that uh, should be uh, in every app marketer's holiday playbook. With millions of apps uh, craving for users' attention, what are some of the easy ways uh, to get the app in front of uh, more uh, people in the holiday season? And uh, how do you uh, identify the right channel mix for uh, to specific successful seasonal campaign? Anton, what are your recommendations? Uh, no, first of all, it may be a boring uh, answer, but uh, it's all about creative. Uh, I think uh, it is the most important uh, uh, part of marketing strategy nowadays uh, when everything turns into automatic, uh, automatic systems. Uh, so you must prepare right now uh, for your holiday marketing uh, activity. You must prepare right now uh, enough amount of uh, creative uh, just to be competitive. Um, if we talk about advertising platforms, uh, when selecting uh, platforms for holiday season, I would first uh, recommend focusing on what is already working for your application. There is uh, nothing magic. Uh, let's assume that it's uh, not your first launch. You have already uh, accumulated data of effectiveness of all uh, uh, channels uh, for your app or game. Uh, so I think 80% uh, of your budget for promotion during uh, the holidays, uh, I would recommend uh, put it in uh, familiar channels uh, that you are already work with. 20% um, for uh, some test activities, uh, it's uh, it's okay. For example, if you haven't tried uh, to work with UGC content in TikTok uh, using uh, their content marketplace, it's a really interesting tool. For example, Spark Ads, when you allow uh, influencer to, uh, to make a creative for you and uh, mix it with your current creative strategy. It's okay. It's, uh, it will be a, a good experiment, especially if it's uh, uh, some funny holiday. Halloween, I send as a typical example, or Valentine's Day. Um, or for example, you can work with mobile campaigns. If you are work with mobile campaigns, but you haven't worked with Twitter, try to plan the content in advance uh, for the audience so, and uh, uh, create it especially for this platform. Uh, I think uh, if it works in major time for your product, you should uh, select it. If we uh, talk about some interesting mechanics for a uh, game, I would uh, recommend to try uh, playable ads for uh, ad networks. It's a good tool. Uh, maybe it's not a huge amount of traffic you will get using this, uh, but it's an interesting experience. It's interactive and it's important. Uh, if you haven't tried some inf uh, activity with influencers, uh, uh, Really, it's a strong instrument, and you uh, should try it. But you should you should test it properly using proper track uh, tracking. For example, uh, using a special one link uh, in App Slide if you're using App Slide tracking or a tracker for your mobile app. Uh, you should uh, give it personal to influencer and uh, uh, see uh, what's quality of traffic uh, you will have. A good solution during the holiday and. Uh, and expensive auction, not about even holiday, just in, uh, there is expensive uh, uh, auction in, uh, in, in autumn and in, in, uh, in December. It's uh, a good way uh, to act is uh, to reactivate your existing uh, user base uh, using targeting channels. So for example, using uh, your targeting channels through paid social networks or uh, push activity or email marketing. It's okay if you've got enough information about your users. 
Um, I think with new content in the app or in the game, uh, this can convert into purchases with a high probability. It's a good way because uh, existing users are more loyal and they got higher conversion rate. That's it. That makes sense. And uh, yeah, th thank you. That's a good call. And uh, uh, Natal, what about your experience? What would you recommend uh, app marketers and the US specialists in terms of choosing the right channel mix? I think um, what Anton was saying about the 80-20% rule is pretty much what we also recommend to follow, give or take. So focusing your efforts on where you can get the most volume makes sense and what has already been proven to work. Um, and you don't want to spread resources too thin. So don't go after too many potential new test opportunities just where you can estimate you can have the most uplift and also focus like seasonal efforts there as well. So I know majority of the people said they um, don't plan or or are only starting to plan to add create or seasonal creatives into or seasonal campaigns and creatives into their strategy for the rest of the year. But we definitely see uplift from it. Like even if you add some sort of like uh, generic holiday design, snow, or I, I, like find little ways to kind of optimize to it. Um, it sounds silly, but it actually does work. And so I think if you're not really optimizing your strategy to it, you might be missing out on opportunity. And um, yeah, the biggest thing that we try to do is just not spread the budget too thin. So again, like pushing in where you know you can get the most value. That's fair, and, and that's important to be focused, not uh, spread it too thin. Uh, Matt, what is your uh, experience? What are your uh, suggestions uh, about the marketing mix? Yeah, I, I, I like the point of uh, Natalie that uh, it's good to stick to the existing uh, mix of channels when you are doing the holiday campaigns as well and Anton's creative uh, point as well is very nice and at the same time it looks like I will be the Apple search as advocate here uh, because um, apart from the creatives uh, with the uh, search terms that you have in Apple search ads is way more predictable and reliable than the creative so you can expect what worked in the previous year to work again and then uh, starting with Apple search as being a good channel to define those seasonal trends because those search popularities and the actual insights that you have for your particular keywords can actually define you the trend that you didn't know before existed. And then speaking about the other channels where you can put your efforts, for example, the connected TV or be it a million dollars that you put in uh, the Super Bowl uh, campaign, it also reflects on the volume peaks in the Apple search ads uh, traffic. So uh, there are two options. You know, it's either you will reap this reward of the increased boost uh, to yourself or you take it away to the competitors. So uh, in the other uh, way, we just want the uh, split metrics acquire user to be the one who takes advantage of these peaks in the uh, situation when the advertiser are boosting their brand volume and don't really uh, control it with the Apple search yet. So then um, we help uh, to set up this bidding automation system that quickly adapts to those fluctuations and helps to take advantage of those uh, uh, increases with while minimizing the risk. Thank you. That that's important. Uh, that that's an important point, Matt. And uh, you know, we all face it uh, that um, the advertising costs continue to creep further and further north the closer we get to Q4 especially Black Friday, especially Cyber Monday, right? Fierce competition comes with uh, this unfortunate downside. Bid prices uh, can increase up to 140% uh, during the holidays. And uh, as per recent study uh, conducted by Shopify, 80% of uh, marketeers confirmed that rising ad spend is uh, their top pain points for uh, the holidays. So my next question to uh, you, to our panelists, uh, <clears throat> would be um, about the most cost-effective strategies across uh, different channels. What app marketer uh, and uh, UA specialists should do uh, to keep their CPM, uh, CPC, their CPT in this reasonable range and uh, as well as guarantee uh, Ross, right? Uh, Natalie, what um, are your thoughts on this? We usually recommend, so start testing a bit early 
um, because also some of the channels take a bit longer to like pass the learning phase or ramp up. So if you can launch at least two to three weeks early, um, that would be ideal. Like, especially for Google app campaigns, takes a bit longer. I mean, what uh, Matt was saying about Apple search ads is also a good point because that you can use that to identify where the seasonal trends are. You can use like Google search trends too. And on search ads, for instance, if you're pushing like certain high volume keywords during the season or CPP tests or something like that, you can easily do that within, you know, that week of, but on uh, Google app campaigns, yeah, two, three weeks before and paid social, maybe one to two weeks before start getting the learnings there. Um, so that way you approach the high season with your best creatives forward. And that's ultimately the goal of like testing early, um, maybe even taking some of the top wins historically and just um, adding some sort of like seasonal factor to them. Because uh, as uh, also Anton said in the beginning, like it really is all about creative. So if you can give your campaigns the best chance to serve with creative, um, I mean, bids are always going to be part of the challenge as well because the costs are gonna rise. And so you're gonna have to bid higher to maintain that with maintain traffic with that competition. But ultimately your creatives will be the deciding factor on converting and scaling within your targets. Um, so yeah, just trying to maintain basically like an agile approach also to which channels you're gonna scale up as we were talking about earlier, like not spreading budgets too thin, but focusing on where you can get the most value. That's uh, the, the biggest the, the biggest opportunity uh, focus on something that uh, drives the biggest value. Uh, Anton, uh, what is your advice on uh, this cost-effective uh, UA strategies? Mm, I think uh, there is uh, basically there is nothing wrong with high season. It's uh, like every year, we, every year we face uh, on a price increasing, and uh, but you in fact do that, as we said previously, the creative uh, production doesn't stop, and there is a constant search for new approaches uh, and, uh, and and post production analytics. It's really important uh, to move uh, step by step. Uh, for example, create uh, twenty unique assets, stop, analyze, uh, try to find out what's uh, what's the best and uh, uh, tune uh, your further strategy. Um, so it's um, just because we are in the constant search of uh, new approaches and uh, we rotate UA strategy, we manage to keep uh, volume of uh, purchases or LTV or RS, depends on your product, depends on your metrics uh, on an acceptable level. Uh, if it's in, if environment is uh, competitive, you uh, need to make um, f, uh, make more effort than usual to, in order to become competitive. Uh, if we talk more practically, uh, uh, you could switch uh, in, in during the high season. You could switch uh, uh, different parameters: optimization goal, bidding strategy, or if you got worldwide product uh, uh, selected. Uh, country list for example if you work previously on a tier one country you always uh, could try to switch to asia switch to europe uh, mix uh, some channels and uh, try to implement uh, for example bid limit strategy target cost or bid cap strategy uh, but uh, to be honest i would recommend to do this often uh, you shouldn't limit advertising platform and you shouldn't limit uh, basically uh, it's uh, all about uh, uh, paid social channels there is uh, you must um, let them uh, uh, let uh, the learning period finish it's important uh, overall if you already have a channel that has uh, basically if you already have a channel that has product channel fit uh, the most reasonable thing you could do uh, you can do is to prepare a lot of creatives uh, keep uh, ads running and just uh, uh, trying to adjust budget uh, to necessary level until you you are in keep you are within kpi uh, for game uh, area uh, for game categories there is a big advantage because uh, uh, there works well advertise in app uh, in app networks uh, unlike paid social channels so they uh, have uh, no uh, no no such high pr uh, price increasing uh, during the high season just because uh, Mm, there is different inventory, uh, and uh, there is no struggle between major brands uh, like FMCG with the performance uh, campaigns uh, on the same placement as, uh, for example, social network feed. 
uh, there is um, it's it's a big difference because in in uh, holidays uh, uh, both parts activity FMCG with their branded advertising in uh, feed and uh, uh, performance creatives with some health and fitness product and uh, in game product and this is the same placement and uh, there is a limit to, of of impression. Uh, so uh, you should always, uh, you have always opportunity to uh, allocate a budget to, uh, to in-app networks. So while when you're working with uh, game category, it's much more easier instead of uh, non-gaming products. For non-gaming products, I, uh, my, my biggest advice, uh, prepare creatives in advance. Uh, it would be great if you start to prepare it right now in the summer, in the end of the summer. I couldn't agree more, Anton. <laughs> that, that's for sure. Uh, Matt, uh, what about you? Um, you're working with uh, marketeers across uh, different categories. How do they revamp their uh, Apple search apps uh, advertising strategy for the holiday season? Yeah, thank you very much for uh, giving me the word, Olga. Uh, so, yeah, I already mentioned in the previous point how. Uh, uh, our users are using this uh, automation to take advantage of the peaks and the spikes and it works in a similar way for the uh, spikes in terms of increased cost because uh, the way they can set it up is to ensure this uh, ROAS or the cost per target conversion with the maximum bit possible to get as much traffic as possible within their KPIs. Uh, but talking about some specific advice for Apple Search as user, for example, the Christmas. It's a very good time to re-enable your returning user campaign because uh, that's what we see with that uh, yearly trend when the uh, user tend to update their devices or uh, come back to their habits that they had before. And uh, for example, in the health and fitness category, the hot season that we see is uh, January. And then uh, we, we have a really exciting case of our agency helping the team that didn't have time for Apple search ads to increase their spending. Uh, four, and, uh, four and a half times, like from uh, 100K that they had in uh, December to almost half a million with only 30% increase in the cost per download. So uh, typically we don't see this uh, increase in the volume with uh, such a small uh, increase in cost. And then uh, my personal favorite is definitely the creative optimization and to ensure the ROIs, max. and then uh, Natalie already mentioned this adding the snowflakes or anything. If you don't do it, I agree. It's definitely just uh, lame. So you will just look dull compared to the competition. Uh, but then uh, when we speak about the creatives in Apple search, it's your app page. So you need to be extra careful when you update it. And then uh, the A-B testing, for example, uh, with the split metrics optimized platform definitely helps. But now uh, users finally can use the CPP. And then it's never been easier to update their uh, ad placement creatives. And then uh, some of the ideas can be... Um, Yes, uh, using this uh, holiday design for the holiday related keywords or also uh, highlight some special holiday offerings when you target your competitor campaigns with help of the CPP. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And uh, um, I see uh, questions from the audience in our uh, chat section. Uh, please uh, make sure to submit uh, all your um, questions and uh, comments uh, to the chat. We will have uh, some time uh, closer to the uh, end of uh, this call to uh, cover them. Uh, if uh, for some reason we won't be able to uh, respond during this uh, session, we will get back to you uh, over email. But uh, we, our goal is uh, to have uh, all the uh, questions answered. So um, please uh, go ahead with uh, submitting them. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, I wanted to talk more about the ways to maximize the value from campaigns during this uh, holiday season. And we all see that uh, forward-thinking app marketeers are focusing not only on uh, the uh, app installs, but also uh, app usage, uh, obviously, right? Because it's important to understand what in-app actions drive value for your business, like adding an item to a card or getting um, up to the fifth level of the game and then uh, find those users uh, who are likely to take those actions, right? <clears throat> what uh, will be your practical tip? on um, how to optimize it, uh, campaigns to bring high LTV users in this post ATT world. Anton, could, could you please share your thoughts on this? Uh, yes. 
um, in terms of increasing uh, user LCV in any season, not even in high season, low season, it's not really important. Uh, it's right to focus on optimizing events that generate revenue. Uh, so even uh, after iOS 14 for uh, iOS uh, com SCAD campaigns, even for Android campaigns, it makes no sense. We optimize uh, um, on uh, purchase event or value event. Uh, sometimes it makes sense, but uh, personally, I wouldn't really recommend if you are about money, uh, optimize for uh, intermediate stages of the funnel. Uh, maybe you will attract the user cheaper, but uh, it will not increase uh, paying share or RP of traffic. Um, for game projects, it's standard to optimize for purchases. And if there is advertising monetization, optimize for re rewarded video views. It's a really good strategy. Uh, if you got a uh, huge amount of uh, in-app advertising, uh, you can test different numbers of use, amount of use uh, and period uh, for which user make this uh, use, for example, uh, 10 views on day zero, 20, day zero, 30, etc. You, you must test it, uh, set this and your SDK, uh, transfer it to advertising platform and try to, to test what works for you the best. A uh, really good solution is to test the value on ROS optimization if uh, your advertising platform allows it. Uh, yes, it would be much more expensive uh, for CPI, but LTV of such audience would be much higher uh, uh, than uh, optimization for events, even if you got a uh, non-purchase product. If you have no purchases in your app, if you are subscription app like service, it's, it also works uh, if you're... Uh, uh, purchase audience using value optimization, it uh, has uh, sometimes it has a higher um, higher conversion rate to purchase and uh, higher retention even on a long day a long term period. Uh, what's more important? What, what's the most important? I think a, pr a predictive model. If you got uh, in your stack, predictive model helps a lot uh, to estimate LTV and optimize it. Because uh, it's based on the retrospective and actual data, which allows you to buy, uh, to build, uh, sorry, to build a forecast uh, of, uh, uh, build a forecast for each advertising platform separately, uh, divided by channel, country, type of optimization creative. It will allow you to manage uh, the budget correctly and allow you to set for yourself proper KPI uh, according to optimization goal. So it's a really good tool you should implement it. I, am real, I strongly uh, recommend to implement a uh, uh, predictive model it's hard but it worth it uh, if you talk about iOS uh, um, iOS Apple uh, Apple campaigns um, rules exactly the same that Android uh, um, this is the correction is that you are limited in data you're limited in data transition to your ad platform from your MMP um, uh, checklist is simple uh, but it based on uh, how we work with apps and it works unless your product uh, unless your product has strong uh, organic with hidden uh, hidden sources like uh, affiliate uh, you, you won't able to track it properly you know for iOS mixing with paid social or advertising networks uh, or you got an, an influence traffic without a uh, personal link so uh, uh, using uh, iOS strategy you shouldn't use uh, so much channels. It will be uh, enough to use uh, to choose two major channels and use it. Uh, and also, you should uh, on the first the first time you should divide it uh, by different countries at least. Uh, for example, using Capsflyer, you are it's okay to uh, count your uh, your effectiveness of your campaigns, so you, uh, plus in uh, paid social channel or in app. Uh, network uh, channel with organic it's okay you, you just could uh, uh, cut um, baseline of your true organic it's 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 okay and we work like that it's uh, really uh, um, uh, convenient for us um, if uh, as an advantage it's really good to have a predictive model that allow you to distribute organic uh, with non-attributive traffic to campaigns and sources so uh, the predictive analytic uh, help, will, will help you to um, work properly with iOS traffic and it's uh, proven by our client's experience, especially in uh, health uh, and fitness category and sometimes in, in FinTech category. Uh, for game projects, it's not a big problem because in-app uh, 
networks uh, allow you to attribute your traffic using probabilistic without ADFA. So you will, you, you will be able to look at, uh, for example, overview uh, report in AppsFlyer and uh, you could uh, uh, be confident that there is uh, the, the all of this traffic are attributed instead of uh, lead traffic. Um, this, is my, this is my advice. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. That's um, a very uh, available and uh, important feedback. And uh, Natalie, what what are your thoughts? Can you add something here? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's interesting that you've done like value optimized campaigns, I think you mentioned, but we usually, I mean, talking about like self-serve ad networks, see the best success with install optimized campaigns. Um, but the problem is with seasonal like seasonal campaigns because ios is meant more so of uh you need some time to like ramp it up because the first days that you test it's you, it's a lot of data loss and so what it looks like when it's bad performance it's you have to try to investigate and understand is it actually bad performance or is it just data loss and so if you have really low budget then you're not really going to be able to see anything and it doesn't make sense to incorporate it into your seasonal strategy. But if you can maintain like at least 500 a day on like a Facebook, for instance, um, and in like a US, UK, uh, actually even in, your, in some European countries, we're testing with clients now and we need that as like a minimum daily budget to start with and give it about a week or so to learn and then you can ramp up but again like the the problem is with ios you want to try to make limited changes so in the approach that you might have on like android where you can test a lot of creatives you can test a lot of audiences you can't really do that on ios i mean you can but you just like performance is going to look bad and it's going to be a question of is it data loss or is it bad performance again so you have to kind of concentrate efforts there more so and um, the idea of like testing early makes sense more so on iOS and anything you can do to use Android as a testing ground. It's not always one-to-one, -one, but it it's like some indicator, but yeah, it, it's definitely a challenge like holidays or not. So the more you can do to get early learnings would be, would be great. Thank you, Natalie. Matt, uh, do you have anything to add here? Thank you. And uh, yeah, for the post ATT thing, uh, is the Apple Search S is the iOS only channel where you can track the in-app behavior without using the probabilistic method. And this statement probably makes all the audience fall asleep because yeah, everyone heard it already a million times. So I rather switch for the other channels, for example, uh, uh, Split Metrics Optimize allows to create the web to app campaign for Facebook, Google. So this means that you can leverage the iOS CPPs and direct your users to those uh, custom product pages to tailor for the specific events and the audiences. And uh, that's when we also see the advertisers moving away from Facebook AAA campaign uh, to the web to app just because they see a better performance being able to transparently optimize for the end uh, final event. That's what changed since the ATT. And then... Uh, uh, yeah, speaking about some like more serious preparation like that uh, Anton mentioned with changing your app entirely and modifying the app in a more heavy way. And the uh, pre-launch testing is uh, this superpower that you get with the uh, split metrics optimized as well. And it works in the way that you can show the user emulated page, track their behavior, showcasing the new features that you want to develop on the screenshots that you uh, just like the sketches that you draw and then uh, uh, it actually allows you to track the full funnel analytics as well and uh, see how the user behave on the app page. That is important. Uh, having this uh, constant tests and uh, optimization is uh, the way to success. So thank you for sharing that. And uh, let's talk about the power of synergy. Um, we see this trend on the market that a lot of app publishers are moving towards merging their UA and ASO. Uh, strategies into this one powerful app growth machine. Uh, Matt, what did your take on this trend and uh, your opinion on UA ASO synergy, uh, how it can help boost the app growth during holidays specifically? 
Okay, all guys, yeah, I'm, I'm holding the floor. So um, for the Apple search ads and the ASO link, the first idea that comes in mind is using the Apple search ads discovery campaign uh, because these broad campaigns can help you define those seasonal keywords that you were never aware about and then include it in your seasonality in a uh, page uh, on the uh, next seasons that you have. And then um, the other application will be testing the keywords that you plan to use in the ASO with your Apple search ads campaign to see how they really perform the full funnel. So test your hypothesis if indeed uh, the selected uh, list brings the significant conversion to the desired effect. And then I also like how this ASO SA topic is covered in the book from Feature, uh, ASO book on the page 105, uh, uh, that's also the topic of uh, the previous growth talk that we had about the SOSA relationship. And all in all, it's uh, not just the improvement of your app page optimization and the conversion helps your ad performance result, but there is also the back backward effect, for example, for the keyword rankings. And then uh, feature highlights those limitations uh, that exist uh, that uh, if you want to see this uh, organic boost, uh, the way to go is to choose the keywords where you already rank higher. And then you would need the high volume uh, and getting all of those volumes to see this incremental effect in the uh, rankings to impact the algorithm with the volume of the installs that you get. Uh, and that also actually makes the holiday season peaks the perfect moment to disrupt the market and uh, use this uh, link for the SOSA and uh, uh, take your, the ranking to your advantage. That's very fair. And uh, sounds like really powerful. Uh, approach to it that, that's uh, really important and uh, speaking about these tips um, so one tip is uh, to have this to leverage the synergy of uh, UA and they so we've uh, seen our customers uh, benefiting from it uh, hugely uh, Anton what are your top five tips uh, for mobile first businesses to prepare to make the most out of uh, their holiday season mm. Uh, first point is my favorite today, as you mentioned, uh, collect enough creative materials and all available resizes for, for all uh, your channels, for all your, for all your active channels. Uh, I think uh, 50 unique uh, creative assets in advance, it's okay, because uh, according to our statistics from 100 unique creatives, only two, maybe three are um becomes a uh, gold creative well, not not really gold creative but it works uh for all platforms on a, a huge amount uh and uh, it's really important to conduct uh, competitive uh, research to be inspired it's it's okay using uh, different services like uh, maybe um at heart or sensor tower uh, to look uh, through uh, the um, marketing strategy of your competitors. Uh, second point, um, uh, SO strategy for some quality is really important. So design icon uh, content of uh, App Store is uh, extremely important and it affects uh, install rate. Even install rate, it's really important to connect it with your current um, event, uh, which are you planning to promote. Uh, point three, calculate in advance the budget uh, you are ready to allocate for promotion in uh, autumn and winter and uh, uh, pre uh, prepare a plan for which advertising platform you will using uh, this period uh, in order to distribute the budget as quickly as possible. Uh, it's really important. Uh, maybe uh, for some categories of app, it's uh, more reasonable to uh, maybe uh, not to scale so much your campaigns in high season, not trying to knock uh, this door of uh, higher CPM. Uh, and it's uh, more reasonable uh, just uh, to maintain uh, the volume and uh, to boost it in January and February when uh, the auction is uh, cheaper. Uh, but to be honest, in uh, in the beginning of this year, we were also very surprised uh, because we won't uh, mention that uh, uh, advertising costs and for major of our categories of clients uh, are reduced. So we, it's like uh, only three days of the year from 1st to 3rd January, it was cheap. Uh, and at the time, it, it started to increase. 
uh, but in the previous years, it was much more cheaper. Uh, point four, but I think it's one of the most important, prepare analytics tech in advance to um, assess effectiveness of uh, product changes uh, to and the effect of your uh, holiday advertising uh, campaign and your product change and your changes uh, for your product. It's important to understand um, why, why are you doing that? Why this uh, uh, event um, should be implemented? It's uh, really um, important to have an opportunity to uh, analyze a uh, cohort of users um, acquired uh, during this period and uh, assess how it works. Uh, is it uh, gain in revenue or some product metrics uh, increased uh, during your holiday activity? And number five, uh, you, you must uh, be friendly. You have, must uh, have a friendship with the SCAD campaigns and not afraid to test uh, different uh, funnels for SCAD traffic as uh, uh, was mentioned previously. For example, web to app solutions is, works really well. Web, uh, just uh, onboarding or using just web, it's, it's also okay. Uh, we got positive experience with web to app, uh, especially in uh, wellness category. Uh, yes, there is a, uh, sometimes there is a problem with uh, discrepancy between real and style and uh, uh, between uh, real, real and style and uh, click on uh, install button because it's all about uh, quality and design of landing. It's like a big challenge to optimize this process, uh, optimize design and uh, performance of your landing, but uh, it will allow you to uh, reduce all the limitations of uh, scan network uh, for your user acquisition campaigns. And for example, you could uh, tr you could use web to app funnel to test uh, creatives because uh, there is no such limitations on a campaign amount or there is no uh, timer which blocks your conversion for 72 hours. Uh, it's uh, just ordinary iOS campaign. So I uh, think you should try it. Awesome. Thank you very much. I love this top five uh, tips from Anton. Thank you for sharing that. And, uh, you know, we just talked a lot about uh, the best practices uh, ensuring the success of uh, seasonal marketing campaigns. Let's talk a little bit on the don'ts list, right? So uh, in your experience, what can damage the uh, pay DA campaigns and what strategies uh, we should avoid? Matt, what is your take here? Okay, th thank you, thank you, Olga. And uh, for, for the dons for the holiday campaigns, I mean, uh, I, I wouldn't start with the one that you should definitely avoid. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't want to repeat myself and the other panelists. But yeah, if you don't do anything for your creatives, like adding these fireworks to the background or the Christmas hat to your brand character on the screens, uh, it, it's not the way to go. And then uh, we also want, wouldn't want you to stay there and uh, do just that, because uh, ideally we would love you to maybe implement some special pricing bundle uh, uh, with, uh, related to the holiday or um, tell a story of your game or uh, app is relevant to the Halloween with a screenshot and changing your app site subtitle, for example, as well, and adding the event, uh, in-app event as a combo. And the other point will be about the seasonality and not thinking that the Christmas holiday season is the only seasonality that you have. Uh, we, we see with the weekend, uh, weekend seasonal peaks for like entertainment gaming apps and the weekday peaks for the business productivity apps. And this seasonality also can be exploited with your bidding strategy and uh, behavior, at least with the apples or chess. And I, I, I wouldn't claim my expertise with other channels. And then uh, the third one is about using those seasonality insights retroactively. So, uh, for example, explaining why your last month performance wasn't too good, saying, okay, it was a low season for us, or uh, uh, just having this uh, excuse of uh, spending your time watching Netflix during the work hours because now it's a low season, so uh, we can do the whatever. I don't think it's a best practice as well. And uh, we see that the stellar advertisers, they use the time wisely, prepare in advance, uh, look for the long term. And then, uh, yeah, if, if, if you're just clueless about how the seasonality looks like, don't, don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, we're happy to provide it, for example. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Um, it's always good to help uh, the community out, right? Uh, Anton, what are your don'ts? What are the don'ts on your list? 
Mm, maybe number one do, don't for performance campaigns is mixing uh, in your creative approach uh, uh, branded creatives uh, with uh, uh, strong uh, brand book and uh, performance creatives because it's uh, not always the same when you uh, basically want to tell some beautiful story for your users sometimes it won't uh, be working as you as you will use uh, performance triggers, performance call to actions, and even uh, meta misleads, not uh, pure for gaming, uh, for example. Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, it uh, it works really well, and it uh, won't uh, um, uh, won't uh, be perform less uh, less effective with the lower conversion rate sometimes uh, some mislead is it's okay to, so you should test it and uh, second don't i think do you shouldn't mix uh, a lot of uh, advertising channels uh, without checking uh, the basic uh, uh, basic hypothesis uh, on the key advertising network it, it's a good solution to uh, find your uh, major channel uh, which uh, uh, got uh, product channel fit and test uh, creatives, uh, test uh, some uh, uh, audience insights on it. And after that, uh, allocate it to another additional channels, maybe which are limited uh, with settings, for example, from, uh, uh, for example, limited uh, with settings as uh, Google UAC, which uh, you have no ability to uh, set uh, anything about audience, just a country, bidding and optimization strategy and creative. Um, and maybe the third one is, uh, I mentioned it in previous, in previous point, you should, uh, uh conduct tests iteratively, uh, moving step by step. And, uh, uh, it's a big mistake not to draw conclusions from your test. Uh, I think, uh, that's the major points. Thank you, Natalie. I know we only have less than 10 minutes left and, uh, uh, a lot of things we uh, still wanted to cover, but uh, we want uh, to hear your dons, uh, Natalie. That's always important. I think the guys covered it pretty well. I don't have anything to add. Got it. Okay. Uh, so, sounds good. So uh, thank you. These are best practices, worst practices uh, as well, right? Some do's and don'ts. Uh, let's now talk about these post-holiday user engagement strategy, right? Uh, we see that according to Google, uh, IPSA's uh, research, millions of people will um, download the app during the holidays, but half of them will uh, eventually abandon the app uh, because it wasn't as useful as uh, they thought it would be. And uh, at the same time, com consumers are forgiven. 91% of uh, smart smartphone users who abandon an app would consider using it again if uh, changes were made. So uh, after the holidays, what's the best way to keep users engaged? And uh, what is your advice uh, on uh, running re-engagement campaigns with, uh, in this privacy first era? Uh, Natalie, the question goes to you. Yeah, I think that it makes sense to try to push like in-app notifications and make sure um, onboarding flow and everything is in Tact, uh, once the user is in app to try to keep them engaged and keep them coming back. So running, uh, yeah, running those like retention campaigns, um, remarketing campaigns also like for lapsed users and trying to get them back in the app. So maybe they open the app on day one through three, but then um, they haven't come back since or they completed event A and haven't come in, come back into you know, complete event A for a second time. So trying to get them back in um, through remarketing lists, it becomes a bit tougher with uh, what we were talking about with iOS because then you need IDFA there, but um, that's a, a tip. And then as Matt said before, like with ASA, you can pretty much do anything without any limitations. So you can run remarketing campaigns there and um, on, on all users, but if there there are other platforms too where uh, you can run like in-app uh, ad remarketing campaigns like Addictive is one, uh, Remerge is another. So tapping into partners there outside of like Facebook and Google could be an opportunity. Um, we have a couple clients that connect 
retention tools like Braze with Facebook and Google to build audience lists. So that's also another tactic. Um, but yeah, of course, it's going to happen that people who download are not going to stick around um, uh, in the high season period because you're just going to be pushing to try to capture as much volume. But you can, of course, still make sure that you're capturing the right audience at the beginning of the funnel and um, you're pushing the right creatives. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you very much. Uh, we are closing. Uh, we are moving closer to uh, the end of our discussion. There is uh, one question uh, I, I wanted to ask uh, about the Martech uh, stack for running this uh, successful uh, seasonal campaign. So, what in terms of technology, uh, marketing uh, technology, what uh, do uh, companies need to have in place uh, in order to be successful and uh, um, understand what drives uh, better results uh, with the seasonal campaigns. Uh, Matt, what is your take here? I mean, not, not only in the overall technology landscape, but focusing on uh, how uh, our split metrics products align with the seasonal campaigns. I'll just recap that the Acquire platform can help you uh, Define the seasonality trends uh, and the keywords for your SO and uh, implement this dynamic bidding strategy to make sure that you take advantage of the peaks, not missing uh, on the like uh, uh, the metrics that you have. Uh, the optimized platform is a great solution for you to pre-test your seasonal creatives as well as validate your hypotheses for some heavier implementation for your app. Uh, and then uh, if you don't have a time or skill to use one of the platform, you can always ask the split metrics agency for the fully managed service here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Natalie, do you have uh, any suggestions from your end? Yeah, I mean, I think aside from everything we touched on, like making sure that your reporting stack is in place so you have an automated way to understand and analyze your performance like um, in the moment, but then also afterwards. So whether that's, I mean, ideally you have like API connection to like a data studio or some other types of reports, but that's something that we found really, really helpful in like the week to week day-to-day -day optimizations for clients is um, having like one source of truth to look at. So ideally that's your MMP, but those reports aren't always the easiest to read. So you have some sort of tech stack tool that feeds in from ad network to MMP connects it as one, and then you can filter down on like high level to granular views. Thank you very much. Uh, Anton, anything you would like to add here? Mm, I could uh, name uh, the full stack for a successful EA. Uh, first of all, uh, MMP, uh, such as Subslayer, Adjust, uh, Branch, uh, Kachawa, Tenjin, uh, any of uh, any of them. Uh, we are used to work and work a lot with Absolute uh, and Adjust as a, uh, with a strong partner. Uh, second point for analytics uh, BI, it's really important. As uh, Natalie mentioned for Google Data Studio, is, uh, it's, uh, sometimes it's enough. It's a good tool. Uh, uh, also, you could use uh, Tableau and Grafana for uh, creating data dashboards. Uh, for product analytic uh, amplitude or uh, competitors, uh, I'm really uh, have no idea what to what else to recommend. Amplitude is good. Uh, tracking subscription, uh, Adaptive, of course, or Revenue Cat or competitors. Uh, it's really important to measure this to measure your subscriptions. Uh, a really good tool for paid social activity. Uh, uh, real reveal board. It's it allows you to create a smart ad rule uh, to manage it. Uh, I'll, I'll, Manage it automatically to uh, prevent you from uh, um, going over your KPIs or when something is uh, uh, going wrong. It's uh, really uh, so a good supportive tool. For competitors and marketing research, uh, for big campaigns, I recommend Sensor Tower or maybe Data AI. It allows you to look uh, uh, through the market and look at your competitors to analyze them, to analyze uh, who is in the auction now. Uh, or uh, or app magic. It's it is the same uh, tool. Uh, of course, uh, when we talk about uh, creative inspiration, spy services such as uh, Ed Hart, for example, or, or Big Spy. If you, you want a lot of 
uh, different uh, UA channels. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, we test uh, uh, web to app solution. Uh, if you got your own uh, server in server infrastructure, uh, um, keep going. Uh, if you have uh, no uh, opportunity to create your own server space and uh, transfer conversions from a tracker to a that platform uh, for web to app solution, you can use the peer. It's a uh, a uh, really good and convenient service to create a, a basic web to app funnel. I think uh, it will be enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very insightful. Um, I appreciate everybody's participation. We are at the top of the hour um, uh, that we have allocated to uh, this panel. I uh, want to start uh, to launch the new poll uh, just to get your uh, feedback about uh, the session today. And uh, once again, a huge thanks for uh, everyone for uh, participation. Hope you bring home this actionable insights and uh, steps to prepare your UA strategy for the high season. Our experts emphasize today the importance of uh, uh, building custom product pages, different creatives uh, for your apps. Uh, and uh, uh, if you're interested in additional information on this, um, please check uh, the uh, CPP playbook um, <clears throat> on uh, Splitmetrics uh, websites or Splitmetrics agencies is happy to help with uh, custom product uh, pages. Uh, in addition to that, uh, a great book from uh, Feature on uh, ASO. Uh, you can find it uh, online and uh, we'll uh, make sure to share it uh, with you uh, as a follow-up. A uh, huge thanks to our, our panelists from Feature, from uh, at Quantum. Please check their uh, services at feature.com and uh, at quantum.com. Their accumulated experience helps top mobile first brands uh, in the world grow faster. That's uh, big. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, connecting with the community, not only um, uh, during these online events like today's panel, but also um, now looking forward to get together um, during the upcoming offline events from Gamescom this week to the Mexico, from Pocket Gamer Connects to uh, App Growth Summit. Let's, um, uh, let, let, let's connect there. And uh, thank you again for your time today. Um, this uh, final poll was very important for us. Uh, thank you, that was a great session and wishing everyone a great rest of the week.